really exciting. Um, just so you know, getting anybody who is not your school teacher to come to your school is almost impossible. And it takes like 900 emails. So a few people worked really hard to make this happen. So thank you to them. Yeah. Really hard to do. So my name is Paul. I'm from California. Uh, and today we're going to talk about how you should not go to college until you know why you want to go. So I've got eight reasons here why you should go. Pick the ones that you're interested in, ignore the others. Yeah? Yeah. Um, so I live in DC. I teach people how to get better grades in less time so they have more time to do cool stuff. I have taught this stuff to students from about 115 schools in the DC area. That is not what we're going to talk about today. Today we're just going to talk about how awesome college is. Who is going to go to college? Yes! Okay, okay. great. That's encouraging. Okay, so, this is the book. This book will not be on the test. Meaning what? Meaning, it's not about the stupid test. It's about paying rent after you graduate. Okay, so a lot of what we're going to talk about is like, how do you, how are you going to kick butt in life? Think about how awesome you want to be in 10 years and figure out how to get there starting now. There is no test with which you can pay your rent. Right? Okay. So, why you should go to college if you want to do cool stuff. This is a college radio station, okay? That's my wife, the one on the right, and that's Olay the Gaucho, the uh, mascot at UC Santa Barbara, where I'm from and where I grew up. So I basically grew up at this college. I worked there off and on for 20 years, had a million different jobs. The last job I had was teaching study skills, and then I moved to DC five years ago, and here I am. So. College is full of cool stuff, even more so than high school. You guys have clubs here? Yeah. Clubs? How many clubs do you have? A lot, like 30? 300? So every college has like 200 clubs. So seriously, every college has 200 clubs. No matter what weird and wacky thing you are into, there are 20 people at your college who know way more about it than you do and who want to hang out. For example, the radio station. So this radio station, I had two radio shows here. Uh, one was where I, well, they were both kind of like interviewing people. So I find the coolest people I could get and tell them to come down to the radio station and I ask them a bunch of questions. At that radio station, there must have been 60 different programmers with different shows. Every one of those shows is some super wacky thing you've never heard of, and they have a million fans. So, you don't have to have a radio show, but you could do any number of other awesome things. So when you get to college, I would always suggest join one club that addresses a topic that you're super into, and join one club that addresses a topic that you don't know anything about. Start with that, see what happens. Clubs meet Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday night at 8 p.m. generally, till like 10 p.m. So when you're planning your life, take that into consideration. By the way, if you have comments or questions or beefs, just shout them out. All right, so you should go to college if you want to do cool stuff, because every single thing that is cool, that comes to your new town, will pass through your college. Everything that comes through DC stops at one of the universities in DC, if not all of them. Every cool thing that is happening in the place you are going to move to will come through your college. So keep an eye out for that. Oftentimes it's free. All right, now, 
you should get A's. Okay, I don't care what grades you've been in the habit of getting up until now, that's fine, right? But once you get to college, just start getting A's because you'll have more opportunities if you get A's. There is more cash for people who get A's and there are more spots in graduate programs for people who get A's. So just get A's. If you want to know how to do that, you can poke around my website. There's a zillion free suggestions there. Now, who wants to be a doctor? Raise your hand high. How many people are we talking about? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, good. So, what does it take? What does it take to get into medical school? What do you know about that? What's it take to get into medical school? What GPA? In college. In college, if you want to go to medical school in the United States, then you need a 3.7 or higher in college, unweighted. 3.7 is an A minus. I didn't, I wish this was not true, but it's true. If you don't have a 3.7 in college, you're not going to medical school in the United States. Sorry. You can go in the Caribbean, but you can't go in the United States. You need A's if you want to go to medical school, and I think that's okay, because it's like if my grandma was dying, I wouldn't want the doctor to have gotten A's, right? So you got to show up if you want to be a doctor. Show up assuming that you need straight A's always. In fact, everyone should do that because then you have a better chance of getting going to grad school free, which is really hard to do. A lot of people go to college free. Very few people go to grad school free these days. But there is always money for people who got straight A's in college, somewhere. So just get A's. This is very the study book, by the way. All right. But don't never forget that grades are arbitrary and inconsistent and A's don't mean anything except that you might be able to go to med school. A's don't mean anything, they don't mean you learn anything. Raise your hand super high if you have ever gotten an A in a class in which you did not super duper master the material. There you go. A's don't matter. They don't matter. They don't mean you learn. You got to go try to learn. Now, if you focus on learning and you commit to learning this stuff, you'll always get A's. Right? Who's ever seen The Matrix? Okay, The Matrix, right? So it's a cool movie. You should see it. Um, the grading system, the grading system is The Matrix. Okay? So the matrix is this made up thing that is like an illusion, right? The grading system is a matrix, okay? People think grades go from like E to A. They don't. That's the matrix. That's not real. In the real world, it goes from E, and it doesn't stop at A, it comes way over here and it goes to actually learning the stuff. So if you commit to learning this stuff, you will always get A's. Just don't think that you learned anything just because you got an A. So, if you want a happy life, stop worrying about your stupid grades and commit to learning all the cool stuff you can learn, right? You want to go to college greedy about learning as much as you possibly can to make sure you get your money's worth. You can't pay your rent with grades. You're going to pay your rent with skills that you develop while you're in school doing cool stuff because you got grades efficiently. So, anyone know which college this is? You know? It's Wellesley. Wellesley. Barry is a boy, but this is Wellesley. Uh, that's the library. And there's Barry looking super stoked on everything he's going to learn, right? So learning is super fun. Worrying about grades is a waste of time. Show up ready to learn. 
Luckily for you, you can learn anything you want as long as you work hard. Yeah? Comments, questions so far? Okay, we good? Okay, so so far, what we, so if you can think of anything cool you want to do, go to college because there'll be a bunch of other people there who are into that thing too. Once you get there, get A's so that you have maximum possibilities after college. But don't settle for A's. Make sure you actually learn the stuff. Yeah? Like in sports, just because you win the game doesn't mean you played well. Maybe the team wasn't very good that you played. Right? Doesn't mean you're, we're trying to do better at everything all the time. That's what we're going for. Right? W's are cheap. Okay. So, once you get to college and you figure out how to get A's and you're doing cool stuff, get some jobs. Right? Get some jobs. This is a student of mine. Her name's Erin Gray. She had several jobs. Okay? This one job that she had, before I, before I met her, she had this job going. She's this made up job of talking into a camera about makeup and fashion stuff on her computer, which earned her $1,000 a month. Yeah, so she made a thousand bucks a month reviewing like five different kinds of gold eyeshadow and shampoo and clothes and stuff like that. That's pretty cool, right? Um, when I learned that, I was like, and she had 60,000 subscribers on YouTube, okay? This is when she was a college junior, 60,000 subscribers talking about five kinds of gold eyeshadow. I was like, oh my gosh, why don't you talk about study skills to students here. She's like, oh, I'm too shy. I'm like, don't be stupid. You have 60,000 subscribers. You're talking to a million weirdos about gold eyeshadow. Of course, you can teach study skills. Uh, so, I hired her to teach study skills at the university, which, by the way, if you want to help people at the university academically, you should know that the tutoring centers on your campuses, those are the highest paying student jobs on campus. She made 18 bucks an hour six or seven years ago teaching people how to get better grades in less time and telling people to put their phones away, especially if they're in the front row. So, <laughs> get lots of jobs. Uh, now, every job that you might want, jobs, some jobs pay money, other jobs pay an experience. So, Basically, any job that might be available to you as a college student is going to pay between zero and 20 bucks an hour in dollars and zero and 20 bucks an hour in meaningful experience. So, if you need money, you are perhaps less concerned about meaningful experience of the work you're doing. But if you don't need money, you have the luxury of going after jobs that are super interesting to you, even if they don't pay. So consider that right now. Who here has had like an honest to goodness job already? Who's had like a, a regular job, like a real working person? Okay, you people with your hands up have a massive advantage over everyone else when you get to college looking for jobs. Update your resume. If you don't have a resume, write one. Make it one page. Enjoy writing it, it's fun. It's like you're telling people all the stuff you're good at. It's fun. You people that have already had jobs run circles around everyone else at college who has never had a job. It is super duper obvious who has never had a job in the college job world. Uh, so you have a massive advantage. Exploit that advantage, show up and get a job. Every college freshman should work 10 hours a week. Don't wait for like, oh, I'm gonna just take the first, uh, no, 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 just work 10 hours. Start with 10, there is time, right? College is way less work than high school, hours-wise, way less. 
So you got time to work. So go make some money or do something cool, but get a job or two. There's all kinds of kooky jobs at colleges. Uh, there was a job at my college where the job was hang out on the roof of the library and count the planes going by. That's a job. <laughs> Alright, so. So what do we have so far? Do cool stuff. Get A's. Focus on learning. Get a job or two. And now, study abroad. Okay, that sloppy person on the left is me. Yeah, that's Mexico City. Now, I'll tell you why I look like that, because I was trying to blend in. And in Mexico City, in the year 2000, that's what college students look like. I was trying real hard to blend in. Okay? So, you don't have to go to Mexico City, but if you want to get good at Spanish, you should go there not somewhere else. Um, all right, so study abroad. So study abroad, actually not, living in another country, moving to another country is the fastest way to get smarter. So if you think you're pretty smart and you can imagine getting even smarter, move to another country for at least six months. Three and a half months, eh, or it's, you, could, eh, you want six months or a year. Summer doesn't count. Anything that is only with Americans doesn't count. You want to do the real thing where you move to country X and you take real classes in your major with people from country X who are also majoring in that same thing. That's what you want to do. Anything less than that, you'll still have an awesome time, but you won't get as smart. So, there's a lot of ways to do this. You could do this in a foreign language, like I did. Like, so I was a half Mexican who wanted to speak Spanish like a real Mexican. So I was obsessed with speaking Spanish like a Mexican. So I went to Mexico City, and I did not speak a single word of English for six months until my California friend came to visit for five days after I'd been there for five months. And then it took me three days before I could get English to come out of my mouth and talk with her. So, if you are working on a foreign language, who thinks they might want to get real good at their foreign language? Uh, if you want to get real good at it, you have to move to another country, and you have to promise to not speak English the entire time you're there. If you do that, you'll get really good. If you, if you speak any English while you're there, You'll just have an awesome time. But language-wise, you will not get to where you could have been. Um, but you don't have to do it in a foreign language, you can do it in English. And you don't have to do it in English in a country where they speak English. You can do it in English in a country where they speak something that you could never learn, but they have school in English. That works too. So this is a big interest of mine. One of the jobs I had at the university was being a study abroad advisor. So, study abroad, Preferably for a year. Question? Uh, yes. Uh, excuse me. You were talking about going abroad to learn different languages, but I was, what if the language you want to learn, you have not learned yet? Do you get like a class in advance and then go? Oh, what a good question. So the question is like, what if you want to learn a language like... Um, like... Uh, like, say, Japanese. You guys have Japanese here? Okay, so let's say you want to learn Japanese. And I'm saying you should go do real school in Japanese. But what if you haven't done any Japanese? Then you hustle real hard taking Japanese for two years, every quarter or semester. After two years of college language classes, you are ready to go do real school in that language. So you take the language for two years, non-stop, you put your phone in that language, you listen to music in that language, you watch shows in that language, and then you go abroad for your third year. Piece of cake. 
Another question? Okay. So study abroad for a year. You might have to settle for six months like I did because of my job situation. So if we go back to the job thing, um, I had a lot of jobs in college. Mostly I had one really big job, which was traveling with the sports teams and doing the announcing at the games and writing all the programs and stuff and calling the newspaper with the scores and playing the music at the games and traveling with the team every other weekend. And that job took between 10 and 50 hours per week, um, which I totally had time to do. So there's lots of fun jobs, jobs you've never heard of. All right, because I had that fun job, I talked myself into only studying abroad for six months which was fine, except then I spent the next 10 years trying to make up for the fact that I didn't go for a year. And I later had to move to Argentina for two years to get to the level of Spanish that I would have had if I just would have sucked it up and stayed in Mexico six more months. So, go for a year. All right. Um, any baseball players in here? Baseball? Yeah? You know this dude? He was the MVP of this year's All-Star Game. He was a student of mine when he was in college. Really, college is about developing the skills you're going to need to pay your rent in the real world. You'll learn some stuff, but really you're trying to learn how to do stuff. So. Some of you might know right now what you want to get really good at, and some of you might have zero idea. I had zero idea. I was completely clueless. Um, that's fine. But if you know what you want to get good at, college is a fantastic time to start focusing on getting good at that thing. He knew that this guy, you know, as with most college baseball players, all he cared about is baseball. So this is somebody who like basically did the minimum in school because they're super focused on their career. And that's fine. He's eventually going to graduate. And he was a fourth round draft pick. He got 350 grand after his third year of college. So you know, he's fine. Uh, but if you show up hungry to develop the skills that you're interested in, you will come out of college ready to kick butt. Question. Holler. Um, how would you, things like baseball are very like lottery based kind of things because it's very difficult to make money. So how would you yeah. guarantee you had a stable job? How would you, if? Guarantee in things like athletics and art, how would you guarantee to get a stable oh, job? Oh, athletics and art, right. So. Athletics, you're almost certainly not going to make it, right? We're going to talk. That's, we'll talk about that next. So, this is a this is an example of somebody who was deathly committed to doing the thing they love, and it worked out for him, right? It, sports wise, it almost never works out, right? Arts wise, okay. So here's what. So you know, I was really interested in writing, and I did a lot of writing when I was in my early 20s. But it was super clear to me that no one was going to pay me enough money to write. Like, I did some writing for money, like 10 cents a word. Okay, that's not enough. Um, you you want to get any job that is a little bit related to the thing that you love, with which you can pay the bills, and if you love that thing enough, you're going to spend every free minute of the rest of your life doing that thing until you either get good enough at it that someone will pay you to do that thing, or you decide to spend your time some other way. So I had a friend who's an artist. Uh, he's a good artist, like a real artist. And 
the job that he had to kind of fund his being a real artist was as a graphic designer. So he did that for years and years and years to fund his art studio. And then eventually he quit doing the art and just got into like organizing art shows and stuff. Uh, I know one real artist, one, her name is Petra Courtright. You ever heard of her? She does digital paintings. Look it up. Petra Courtright. She is my sister's preschool classmate. Um, she is the real thing. And she makes money and they fly around the world to do art stuff. That's one. I know a lot of people. That's one art person that I know who's doing it. So it's possible, but as they say, not bloody likely. So you need a fun way to pay the rent in the meantime that is advancing you toward the possibility of doing something like this, but that doesn't require you to make money doing something that the world doesn't throw money at. Right? Like writing for me. Yeah. Okay. So, it worked out for Shane Bieber. This guy's going to be a bazillionaire. He's going to be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. He's going to pitch in the big leagues for 15 years. And three or four years from now, they'll probably be making $15 million a year. But that's not you or I. Okay? Now, a good reason to go to college is to find mentors who can get you a real job when your dream job doesn't work out. So, this is another student of mine. This is what it looks like. This is a black student, a black high school kid from DC who wants to be a NASCAR driver. He's famous now. Look him up. He wants to be a NASCAR driver. He is literally the first black kid from DC to ever want to be a NASCAR driver. And guess what? He's really good. And he's on this driver diversity, driver development team. Okay, you know how hard it is to be a NASCAR driver, right? There's like 30 in the whole world, right? So as good as he is, and as excited as I am for him, I think it's unlikely that he's going to end up being a NASCAR driver. But so what? Well, what I noticed about his approach to this is that every week, every weekend when he goes and races cars, he is meeting every adult in that business. His Twitter feed is full of pictures with him and famous NASCAR people. And he's charming, and he's a good student, and he's got great study skills, and he's highly motivated. What adult wouldn't love to help someone like that? I have no doubt in my mind that he is going to end up working in some race car thing. It would be great if he was a driver, but he is so good at finding mentors that there's going to be adults are going to be lined up to help this kid. That's a big part of what college is about. Life is about making friends with old people. Right? The old people have the money and the jobs that the young people need. So, you want a job, go make friends with some old people. Now, how do you do that? You have to be interested in getting their help, but equally as importantly, you have to be interesting enough for them to want to help you. So don't just show up at some old person's door saying, can you help me? Show up saying, I know this cool thing that you are also interested in. Can you help me learn more about it? Something like that. Right? College is full of people who are older than you. Especially when you're a freshman. Make friends with people who are older than you. They have figured things out way more than you have. And they might just be able to hand you a job or an internship or some cool thing. 
But you can't be afraid of the old people, even when you're a freshman. You're a freshman trying to make friends with a sophomore, right? As big as idiots as college sophomores are, they're infinitely smarter than a freshman, right? Think about you when you were a high school sophomore compared to now. You're like a genius now compared to your idiot 10th grade self, right? So when you get to college, you'll be a freshman all over again. Go find people who want to help you. People like me work at colleges trying real hard to find people to help, walk around saying insane things, and new season comes up and asks questions after. Right? College is full of these people, but they don't necessarily advertise the fact that they want to help you. And guess what? They don't have time to help everybody. So who gets help? The people who show up and ask for help and are interesting enough to capture the old person's attention so that they want to help them. Yeah? So. Okay, so last thing. And then I would love your challenging questions. This is Barry, the study dog, getting ready to work out. If you don't work as hard as you can at the things that you love doing, it's going to be real apparent to the people who also love doing those things that you're not going to make it doing that thing. And then they're not going to want to give you jobs. So you got to show up ready to work your butt off in college. I promise you that the schoolwork is not the hard part. The hard part is making new friends, remembering to pay the rent, figuring out what you want to do with the rest of your life. Remember, life lasts a lot longer than school. You're almost done with school. Like, see, all you've done is school your whole life, but pretty soon, school will be like ancient history, and you will just be living, right? So, work super duper hard, and most importantly, do not go to college unless you know for a fact that you have enough money to pay for college. If you don't graduate from college, you're going to be in debt the rest of your life. Do not go to college unless you know that you have the funding secured via scholarships or financial aid or family help. You've got to commit to finishing. In my city, there's a lot of people who go to college who are never, ever, ever going to make it, and that's super obvious, and that is like criminal. And the people telling them to go should be thrown in jail. Only go if you know you can pay for it. Because if you can't pay for it, you're going to be bumming hard. Right? So how can you pay for it? Get some jobs. Get some A's. And then get future school paid for. Apply for useful scholarships, like that study abroad thing I mentioned, there are scholarships where they give you, a, the US government will give you a whole bunch of money if you go study a language that's super duper hard to learn in a country where life is super duper hard. There are scholarships for that kind of stuff. Um, show up ready to work your butt off and things will go well. Anything short of that, and your life is going to be harder than it needs to be. It's actually easier to show up ready to work super hard. It's less stressful to get straight A's than to get half A's and half B's. Because when you're getting the B's, you're worried about bringing it up to an A or that it's going to slip to a C. The least stressful path through college is to cruise through with 95's in every class. That's the least stressful way to do it. It's the most efficient way to do it. And then you have the most mental and emotional and physical energy to go do all the other awesome stuff that they have at college, which is pretty much everything. College is super awesome. 
There's almost no schoolwork to do. Distraction. Okay, so what would you like to know? I worked at a college for 20 years. I grew up at one for like 40 years. Anything you could possibly want to know about college, I have a fun answer for it. What do you want to know? Yes? Did you enjoy Santa Barbara? Did I enjoy Santa Barbara? Yeah, I enjoyed it, but I'm from there, so I didn't really know the difference. Right? Um, I enjoyed it. It's the most beautiful setting in the world. Uh, I really do believe that. Like, I, cruised, I, I spent three years traveling around. I hung out in 35 countries. I've decided that Santa Barbara is the most beautiful place. But when I lived there, I did not know that because that was where I was from. I was totally clueless. Like we have, on, the beaches in Santa Barbara have tar on them. It's naturally occurring tar that comes up from the ocean. When I was a child, I thought that meant that every beach had tar. I did not, I had never seen a beach that didn't have tar until I was 21 years old in Mexico. And I was like, where's the tar? This is so weird. People are like, no dummy. Beaches don't, are not supposed to have tar. I didn't know that. Santa Barbara's great, but it's a public school, and it's out of state, and there's a $25,000 surcharge for non-California residents to go there, as is normal, right? So, I don't know, it might be kind of a tough sell, right? What else? Mary Pat? You talked about getting to school and working really hard, being focused. What, what's a good way to go about it if you're not exactly sure what you want to focus on? Like what, what is your, like what your major is? Yeah, so I was completely clueless. Uh, the reason I ended up with three majors and a minor was that I couldn't decide on anything. Uh, very few people know what the heck they're gonna do when they get there. Very few. So what you want to do is work real hard in your classes so that they go well with minimal stress. And then work really hard at trying to discover cool stuff. So go volunteer at the radio station. Go to two clubs, maybe three. Go to all the free things that are on campus. All the cultural centers have free super fringe movies, go to those. Go talk to every professor and spend your energy trying to discover what it is that you're into. And realize that that might change, right? Like some of you, who already feels like they have a mission in mind for when they get to college? A few people, some of you, a third of you. So your mission might change, right? Remember that you decided on this mission as a high school senior or possibly even younger. It's real possible that your mission will change. That's fine. But if you show up with a mission, remind yourself of what your mission is and then reevaluate every few months. Your college is full of people who are messing up but having a really fun time doing it. You're going to get there and you're going to see people messing up. And you're going to think, that looks so fun. Maybe I should start messing up. But no. You had your mission. They have their mission. And if you don't have a mission, then your mission is explore as much as possible and figure out how you want to spend the rest of your life. How else can I help? Yes? Do you, do, you, um, do you think that having studied so close to where you grew up was an advantage or was it an advantage towards your education? That's a fantastic question. Thank you for that. The question was the fact that I went to college in my own town, not even in my own town, the fact that I went to college where I had been working since eighth grade. How did that affect my long-term circumstances? It, 
was a different time back then. This is 1997. I did two college applications. Two. <laughs> two, right? I applied to three UCs and I applied to Stanford. And I got in everywhere, and I went to Santa Barbara because they paid me a bunch of money to go in the form of a super duper full scholarship and a sweet job with the sports teams. That was really the driving factor for why I went, was the money. And as we mentioned here, the money should really be the driving factor in where you go. There were advantages to going to a college where I already knew everybody that worked there. And any of the disadvantages I'd say I overcame by moving to Mexico City for six months and then later is because I did because I graduated from college owing zero dollars, I had the luxury of then traveling in Europe and the Middle East for six months and then moving to Argentina for two years and taking the bus home. So, more so, so I, yeah, there was, there's disadvantages definitely. Like, I did not grow up as fast as if I'd gone to Berkeley. But I made up for it by going to Mexico City where life is a million times harder than Berkeley. Um, but mostly it's the money. Right? You don't have to go to the fanciest college that you get into. Stanford's the hardest college to get into in the country. I wanted very badly to be convinced that I should go to Stanford and that it was worth the money. I was not convinced of that. I visited, I stayed in the dorms, I talked to everybody I could talk to, and I just was not convinced that it was worth going in the debt for the rest of my life with a younger sister coming behind me. So I took the money in this sweet job. That's a really good question. The best thing you can do for yourself is graduate with minimal debt. Yeah. So is this like, are we talking about UMD here? Yeah, so UMD is a fantastic university, right? Um, it also depends if you know you're going to go to grad school. Like, if you know you're going to a certain flavor of grad school where that's going to cost an arm and a leg, then that is all the more incentive to do college economically. Is there one, thank you, sir. Is there one last question? Yes, last question. If you're majoring in Spanish like you did, which country would you or would be the best if you want to like immerse yourself? If you're majoring in Spanish, which country is the best one to go to? I always say Mexico City is the best place to go because Mexico is infinitely more relevant to a life in the United States than any other Spanish speaking country. And it's a megalopolis, and it's super cool, and they have the best food, right? Um, it's infinitely more relevant. Spain's great. I love castles, okay? But how many Spanish people do you know, right? There's Mexicans everywhere, and Mexico's next door. Mexico's just more relevant. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much.